the last book in the Dark is Rising sequence where finally all of the puzzle pieces come together to create the epic finale. Hello full bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I am here with this epic book, The Silver on the Tree, the Darkest Rising Sequence, the final book by Susan Cooper herself, and well, let's get right on to it. Wolf Stanton, Jane, Barnabas, and Simon Drew. They are all coming together for the final fight. Because when silver on the tree, when the tree blossoms, of the power of high magic blossoms, and the person who wields the crystal sword and cuts the blossom and takes it wields the power of the high magic. And as we know, the power of the high magic is the only thing that can drive the light or the dark away. Therefore, it's a race. The race to get the crystal sword, get those blossoms, and drive the dark away. So, 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 our, si our five so far main characters have come together, Mary and Men coming later. And they go ahead and they go ahead and try to find the lady, one of the more powerful lords of the dark. I mean, lords of the light. And then they find the lady, and the lady gives them a couple clues something about a lost city, a spinning wheel, a bone, and of course, the crystal sword. Bran and Will together ventures into back in time into a lost land. There they meet Guion, I believe. Yeah, that's what I noted down here. Guion, who is who seems to be a friend of Merriman. And Guion leads them towards the castle where the sword is. However, they are deterred. The white and black rider and various other lords of the dark want to stop them. They are evil. And they want to stop the light from getting the sword at all. The dark doesn't get it, the light doesn't get it. The dark, of course, in that case, would prevail. How however, of course, the light does not fear the dark. And so they go through several tri trials. A white bone monster comes ahead and tries to kill them. Of course, they manage to dodge and weave and manage to reach the place. And there, they are met by the fact that of this huge spinning wheel thing with high, the power of high magic was was at the door of the castle, closing it, and no one could get in. However, he remembered something about the lady's rhythm, something about the horn stopping the wheel. So he brings out the hunting horn that he had gotten and gave it a huge blow. And the horn when the horn sounds, a beautiful sound sounds, and stops the wheel from turning. And so the the dark, the lords of the dark were extremely angry. However, the two main characters, Bran, Daddy's the Pendragon, and Will Stanton, managed to enter the castle. There, they are met with a maze of mirrors, which they manage to escape by going only right. And afterwards, finally, they have made it to the king. Now the king is sad and he doesn't want to give up his sword. And he's sad, he's depressed, and he doesn't he, he's lost all purpose in life and he's just waiting to die. However, he goes, Oh dear Bran Davies. Or the Pendragon. He goes up to him and says, I am Bran Davies, son of King Arthur! The Pendragon, and I demand my blade, Arias, named after the Blazing Dawn. And so he, the king said, "The king says, all right." He understands finally, and he is for a second knocked out of that darkness that he is in, and grabs the blade, Arias, blazing. Gives him, gives it, gives the beautiful crystal sword to Bran, who touches it and becomes the Pendragon. And these two, with the blade, manages to escape. And and they rendezvous with 
the three Drews, Jane, Barnabas, and Simon. And finally, five of them together, and Merriman also joins them, and together they go back in time, and they meet King Arthur. He has just used the six signs of the light to defeat the savages, and he gives the six signs to Will Stanton. And the six, six will protect the tree. And six of them together, they go on a train, and they see Jonathan Rowland on the train with this, with his wife. However, they find out that his wife is actually the White Rider, one of the Lords of the Dark. And apparently, he had, they have been manipulating Bran's life for his entire, well, for his entire life. And he is, Rowland is heartbroken. But he accepts it because he is a kind man who knows the light must prevail. And every and then they go up to the silver on the tree and they fight their way to the silver on the tree. And Brad draws his blade. And the six, the rest of the five, they all carry the sign in a circle around the tree. And the, one of the six, Brad has to cut the actual blossom. So our dear. Our dear Rollins, Mr. Rollins, he grabs the last sign and holds it up. And it blazes with power. And all together in a circle around the tree, protecting it from the dark. While well, Bren cuts it, cuts it, grabs the blossom, and high magic is on the side of the light. And the darkness is driven away, away from humans until the end of time. However, now, this means that although they have managed to win, it is now a goodbye. And finally, one must get alone. Merriman is leaving, and Bran, although his father Arthur had asked him to go to his castle, castle and live his life with him, Bran says no, and that says that he will stay in the mortal world. And the light says that they will erase everyone's memory, everything about the light and the dark. For the dark had finally been defeated, and the rest of the six would lose their memory. Everyone, of course, except Will Stanton, who would eventually come back to Merriman. And Merriman says this. For remember, that is all together your world now. You and all of the rest. You, we have delivered you from evil, but the evil that is inside men is at the last a matter for men to control. The responsibility and the hope and the promise are in your hands. Your hands and the hands of the children of all men on this earth. Your future cannot blame the present, just as the present cannot blame the past. The hope is always here, always alive, but only your fierce caring can bat it into a fire to warm the world. For Drake is no longer in his hammock, children, nor is Arthur somewhere sleeping. And you may not lie idly expecting the second coming of anybody now. Because the world is yours and it is up to you. Now, especially since man has the strength to destroy this world, it is the responsibility of man to keep it alive in all its beauty and marvelous joy. And so the book ends. With everyone's memory being erased, except Will, of course and Merriman disappearing, along with everyone of the light and everyone of the dark. And so here it ends, Silver on the Tree, after five books in the darkest rising sequence, the dark is defeated once and for all after this epic scene, and it is all over. We have won. And my, honestly, this series was such an epic experience, it was probably the great, one of the, the greatest series I've ever read. And like I said, it just fits together so well, like, like a puzzle. And one by one, the puzzle pieces come together. And finally, at the epic finale, we can feel all of the puzzles crackling together to create a blazing picture. A blazing picture I'm sure Susan Cooper wanted us to see. It is such a beautiful series, and it was my pleasure to read through it. However, now another universe called. I've been going through the Grishaverse and I've bought book two. Expect that review very, very soon. And like always, your bookbuster, Aaron the Bookbuster, the darkest rising sequence, 
the big battle between dark and light, and final message at the end for Merriman, yes, we can no longer blame demons or some sort of darkness controlling man. For the darkness of men is within our hearts, and therefore it is our responsibility to banish that dark within us. Goodbye, and have a great day. Thank you.